Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to discuss the EKG. So what does EKG stand for? Elec yes, electrocardiogram. So we're recording the electrical activity of the heart. And why is it useful to have, to get an EKG? So what it, what it can tell us, it gives us um, information on how the electrical system of the heart, if something is wrong. So for instance, if someone goes to the ER and they're suspecting of a heart attack, uh, one of the things that they'll do is they'll look at an EKG. And so what it'll indicate, it won't look like a normal EKG wave, which is up here. There will be some abnormalities. Okay. One of the examples, it's called a STEMI, so ST elevation, myocardial infarction. So just from here to here, S in the T segment, it's elevated. So that's just one example of, you know, a diagnostic to determine, right, okay, something is wrong. Okay, all right, so now we have a good um, general understanding of the EKG. Um, the next thing that I want to get into is some of the terms that we go over, okay? So when we say depolarization, what does that mean? Yes, so the cell membrane is becoming more positive compared to repolarization, it's becoming more negative. And what does that do to, what is, why does depolarization occur? How does it become more positive? Action yeah, action potential. So for instance, sodium will rush into the cell and then that's it rising and then it'll go down whenever the sodium channel closes and potassium leaves the cell, okay? So I want to make, make it clear that the EKG is not a single recording of an action potential. This is including all of the electrical activity of the heart, okay? So let's do a, a quick refresher here of an action potential. So once again, Sodium is a positively charged thing. It goes into the cell, right? And so as a result, when enough of it flows in, let's say threshold is negative 50, it'll go up, right? So this event where, so number one, so we'll call that, we said that that was depolarization. So membrane potential is becoming more positive. So all of these positively charged things, right? They enter into the cell, that's depolarization. So then once it reaches at its peak, the sodium channel will close. So no more sodium is gonna be, is gonna flow in. And so as a result, it's, it peaks and then it starts to go down. And the reason that it goes down, so number two, we call this repolarization. So depolarization is due to a sodium, the sodium influx and repolarization is due to the potassium efflux. So if this is the potassium that's in the cell, it's gonna go outside. So this is just a normal action potential. Okay, so let's start to talk some of the basics of the EKG. So what is this uh, particular wave here? What do we call this? So number one. Yeah, so number one, this is the P wave. And what occurs during the P wave? Atrial what? Depolarization, good. All right, it's coming, membrane potential is becoming more positive. So then number two, what is this part here called? The QRS complex. So during the QRS complex, what occurs? Ventricular depolarization, as well as, so right here, atrial repolarization. So atrial repolarization, it's not shown because look at the the peak here for vent ventricular, right? It's it's very large compared to what the atrial repolarization would look like, something like that. Okay, so it's not shown on the EKG. Okay, so then number three, what do we call this? Yeah, so this is the T wave. And what occurs during the T wave? Ventricular 
Exactly, yeah. Ventricular repolarization. Okay, so some of the basics here of an EKG. But then what is what sends the signals through the heart? Because remember, the heart muscle cannot contract unless it's receiving the electrical impulses, right? Because remember, once again, from AMP1, we learned about the cross bridge cycle and how muscle shortens and it lengthens, okay? But what are, what are the components of the heart that are going to allow it to beat, the, the electrical conduction system? So we call it the intrinsic conduction system. What's there, what are some of the players there? Yeah, so you have, so number, I'm just gonna write a number here. So number one, this is the SA node or the sinoatrial node. And then number two is what? Which one is that? That's still within the right atrium. Yeah, atrioventricular node. So the SA node, it's known as the pacemaker of the heart because it'll send the signal here to the AV node. And then there's also something that's known as the internodal pathway that will send it to the left atrium. Because remember, the right and the left atrium, both of them have to contract in order to get it into the ventricles. But the muscle is not going to contract until after the signal. So during atrial depolarization, which is onset by the SA node, right? That's what starts the P wave. The muscle is not going to contract until after we get the signal. Okay, so SA node sends the signal to the AV node. And then what's number three, which is here at the top? Uh, as part of the, it's within the interventricular septum. What do we call this? So the bundle, the bundle of Hiss. So you have the bundle of Hiss, and then number four, so coming all the way down here this way, so number four, this is the right and left bundle branches. And then what's found within the ventricles, this is what's known as the Purkinje fibers. So you have the Purkinje fibers. Okay, so we have atrial depolarization occurring here at the P wave, which is, which is set off by the SA node. The signal reaches here to the AV node. There's a short delay that occurs here. And then from there, we then get our, the formation of our QRS complex, right? So that's what's coming down this way through the right and left bundle branches. So that's what's onset here at the, so remember once again, this is the apex of the heart. And then it'll completely, the ventricles will completely depolarize once it occurs all the way through the ventricles. And then after that occurs, then we can get our full contraction of the myocytes or the cardiac muscle cells. Okay, so I've already introduced that an EKG is not one single action potential, okay? So there are two main types of cells that are found within the heart, okay? For the EKG, we are considering the electrical activity of everything, and the two main types of cells found within the heart, so you have what's known as the pacemaker cells, as well as the, lard, the bulk of the heart, which is the myocytes themselves, the muscle cells. Okay, so we're, what we're gonna look at is, how does the electrical activity here compare to what looks like for the action potential? So for the pacemaker cells, remember, this is what includes mainly the SA and the AV node. When we say that it's a, the intrinsic conduction system, what we're saying is that the heart beats on its own. It doesn't need anything else. So for instance, when they do like a heart transplant and they take the heart out, it still beats because 
the system is still intact. But what can influence the, the heart rate is the autonomic nervous system. Remember sympathetic and parasympathetic? Because there are nerves that come off of the medulla, right, part of the brainstem, that'll come down and then they'll synapse here within the SA node and the AV node to influence it, to increase the heart rate. Okay, so what do the pacemaker cells, what is their action potential, uh, what does it look like? Well, it's similar to just a normal one, but there's an additional player, which is calcium. So we'll see where does calcium come into play. So the first thing, we have what's known as these, so they're called leaky sodium channels. So they're real leaky, meaning that in order for it to completely depolarize, we have to reach, we have to reach membrane, uh, um, we have to reach threshold. So once we reach threshold, so when enough sodium enters into the cell, we reach threshold. From that point, this is whenever we get a rapid influx of calcium. So the rapid influx of calcium results in this spike. So that's still depolarization. But then it'll peak, and then from there, we still get the efflux of potassium. So then it starts to go back down. So remember that this is continuously happening. We want to continue this signal. It's a little bit different compared to the muscles, right? Not all of the muscles are contracting per se, but the heart it has to work all the time, whether you're sleeping, whether you're moving. This signal has to continue to happen. Okay, so this is for the pacemaker cells. Well then, what does the action potential for the myocytes look like? Well, for the myocytes, you still get an influx, you get a rapid influx of sodium. So it results in a sharp spike, right? But then at a certain point, it's going to start to plateau like this. And then it starts to go down. So why does it plateau? The reason that it plateaus is due to the influx of calcium here. And so the purpose of having this plateau is because the ventricles, they have to stay contracted in order to pump the blood out. And then once the calcium channel closes, no more calcium is let in, so it plateaus. And then from there, then we'll get the efflux of our potassium. So potassium efflux, I'll write that there. So potassium efflux, it's coming out. That's why it's repolarizing once again. Okay, so we've talked about the electrical activity of the heart. The next thing that I want to mention is one of the distinct features, so what, how we're able to distinguish between um, cardiac cells compared to just normal um, muscle cells is a distinct feature known as the gap junctions or the intercalated disc. So this specific feature of the heart that's what I have drawn here in red. So the reason that the heart is able to have smooth, coordinated contractions is due to these gap junctions. Because as this is occurring where we have these action potentials, they're going to flow through these gap junctions. So think about, once again, this pathway where it's flowing this way, getting uh, into the myocytes, and that's what's allowing these heart muscles to contract.